Hey gang, I'm Brett. This is my first video documented foray into hydroponics. Uh, today I'm going to show you my partially solar powered hydroponics rig, so let's take a look. So here on the right hand side we've got all of our supplies, our soil and pots and pH test kits and adjusters and liquid plant food and our TDS tester. Uh, adjacent to that on the left hand side is our seeding and rooting station. Everything that you're going to see in the garden was started from seed here under these lights and on this heating pad in these covered jiffy trays, which now has a bunch of junk in it. Um, the lights are just two 32 watt T8 uh, 5000 Kelvin daylight bulbs, and all of that is plugged into a mechanical timer outlet, which I have programmed for I think 14 hours overnight when it's coolest. And I should probably do something about that pile of cords. And next to that, this giant shoddy looking structure is where the magic happens. It's a four foot cube, four by four by four. The, the sides here are just made out of styrofoam panels uh, for a little bit of insulation. And the frame is just made out of one by two furring strips. Really cheap. So that's the side view. You can see the, the water reservoir below that. And move it around to the front. The front panel is hinged so I can just swing it open. And the upper left hand corner of that has uh, an opening cut out so I can just sort of spot check it without having to open it up. It's currently covered by just a piece of cardboard that I can remove easily. And it stays shut just with this little eye hook right here. I'm going to go ahead and pop off. We'll take off this guy. That's where that goes. And the whole front panel then just slides open. And here we have our garden. You can see the inside is lined with highly reflective mylar emergency blankets, and that's to make the most use of our light, which is a 250 watt. Uh, HPS system. Um, it's actually a ceramic metal halide bulb that's in there right now. HID lighting might be a little overkill for what I'm doing here, but I also needed a heating solution because this is in the basement and it is winter in the Midwest. And the biggest drawback of HID lights is the, the heat that they output. So. I chose to turn that into an advantage and uh, use it to both light and heat my area. So it stays pretty warm. It gets to about lower to mid 70s when the light's on. And the lowest I've seen it go to is, is somewhere in the upper 50s or about 60 overnight when it gets the coldest. And I make sure to keep it pretty well misted to make sure the humidity stays fairly high. Um, I honestly don't really know a, a good target number. I just try to keep it above 50. Before I get much further, I guess I should explain the basics. Uh, this is, a, I have a flood and drain system set up here, uh, which means that at timed regular intervals, the, the beds here will both fill with water uh, for a couple minutes and then drain back into the reservoir, which just sits right below that. It's a 30 gallon tote, and there is a water pump in there that every four hours will pump water through the irrigation tubing here into the beds, which are just concrete mixing tubs, by the way. And then it shuts off in two minutes and we'll just drain back into the reservoir. On the right side here, I, just, I made a little spigot to, uh, so I can at a glance see the water level that happened to look inside. Um, and I've actually got it covered, you can see, with some cardboard because um, I actually drilled some holes into this. Uh, to to house some three and three quarter inch net pots with the notion that I would sort of combine my flood and drain system uh, with a deep water culture system at the same time. Um, I haven't really read of anybody doing that, but I, I don't see why not. So, uh, but problems with that included, I didn't really think about that when I was hooking up the irrigation. So as you can see, it blocks like half the holes anyway. And I'd have to hook up some lights underneath here, which would be kind of a pain. Um, and 
I have to do something about this guy not eating the lettuce that we grow in there. So, uh, I just decided to scratch that plan. And we'll just keep her covered up. Also feeding into the water reservoir are the air pump and water pump cables and tubes. Uh, but since I'm not doing the whole deep water culture thing, I don't really need the air pump. Which is this guy here. So what I'll probably do, you may have noticed I have two fans in the grow area. Uh, that's because this guy here is uh, that's a 12 volt fan that's operated off the battery like everything else. And I was sort of, I was slowly losing the, the battery battle with the 12 volt fan on all the time. So I supplemented it with the just a regular 120 volt uh, AC fan. Um, so I, I run the 12 volt fan three or four days out of the week and then switch to the other guy just to let the battery charge back up to full. But if I go ahead and just uh, just disconnect the air pump, I can probably get that behemoth out of there and just run the 12 volt guy. I've got a 12 volt uh, car fan that I stripped the cigarette plug adapter off of and just hardwired into our power source, which we'll look at now. Now this isn't hydroponics related, but everything here except for the lights is powered by a solar charged battery. We've got power coming down through the basement rafters, a uh, drop line from a battery that's sitting on the floor above, and that battery is hooked up to a 60 watt solar panel that uh, is wired through the attic and then to the battery. And behind this cheap little breadboard made out of poster board is our power. Now, I won't get too deep into this, that'll probably be a, a subject for another video, but uh, everything here is 12 volts and I have sort of just a, a faux junction box made out of a, a terminal strip here that everything's hooked up to. Uh, the air pump is on all the time, just hardwired into one of these guys. Uh, the water pump is hooked up to our timer right here as are uh, my totally superfluous LEDs. Uh, I do have a master power switch just for safety really, that'll cut off the power at that point. The 12 volt fan is also hooked up directly to one of these terminals, uh, but it has its own on off switch so it's not on 24 seven if I don't want it to be. Setting all that up wasn't all that difficult, but finding 12 volt appliances to use in the first place uh, proved a little tricky. And conventionally you just use aquarium pumps, but those are 120 volt AC and I needed 12 volt DC. So I went into the marine world and for my air pump I found um, a live well pump, I think designed for fishing boats to keep their caught fish alive. I don't know, I'm not a fisherman. And um, for the water pump, which you can't see at the moment, I got a 12 volt marine bilge pump designed to, you know, pump water out of boats. So when I was first setting this up, I just sort of excitedly threw in as many pots as I could fit. Um, but as they, things started to grow, uh, I quickly became aware that I'm not going to be able to fit even half these plants when they grow to, uh, to maturity. So take a peek there. You can see that the tomato plants here are starting to sort of butt heads a little bit and encroach each other's territory. Um, and they're, you know, they still have a lot of growing to do, so that's obviously not going to work out when they get to maturity. Um, and the peas, I need to trellis like yesterday. Um, even the kale, which I would have thought would be sort of a lower profile plant, uh, is starting to invade its neighbor's territory. So, in short, what I need to do is just get some of these plants out of here, but you know, I don't want to get rid of them, so what I'm going to do is set up a, a separate station just for the tomatoes. We're going to make a, a deep water culture uh, five gallon bucket station for the tomatoes, and um, what that'll do too is, is let me sort of tweak the, the nutrient solution just for the tomatoes purposes. So another problem I ran into um, was the fact that since there's just, you know, one reservoir, everything gets the same, so I have to sort of make sure everything stays at more or less the same growth stage. For example, if I were to add a, a younger plant into this bed right now, because of where the nutrient solution density is at, you know, it would just, it would just burn it out. So I'll just separate the tomatoes, make that sort of a separate gig, and uh, that's what we'll do next time. All right, well that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about the setup or, or any tips for me, please comment. Um, and stay tuned next time for when we'll build the deep water culture system. Thanks.